what was obviously he would have a huge influence on your career. Oh, absolutely. So you could like, what was it like? What age were you when you started realizing that he was a football coach and you were just absorbing all this stuff? Well, I got a chance to go to training camp at an early age. So that was so much fun for me to watch and be around guys. The ball never hit the ground. I'm watching Eric Coriel with Dan Fouts, Charlie Joyner, Kellen Winslow, John Jefferson, Wes Chandler, uh, I mean, Lydell Mitchell, all these guys running around catching balls. I had no idea what I was looking at. I had no, no idea. The ball just never hit the ground. I thought, oh, this is pretty cool. You know, guys throwing the ball around. And I come to, come to realize how hard that was and how good they were. Uh, that was a lot of fun. And just seeing Dad being the, the orchestrator of it all, the, putting the pieces together. But more importantly, what I gained from him was developing relationships, deep, lasting, meaningful relationships that just gets you to another level of uh, kumbaya with the group you're in and uh, friendship and camaraderie with the guys. And as you notice, anybody who finishes playing or coaching, they miss the camaraderie more than anything else. And he was a camaraderie builder uh, from barbecue, quarterback barbecues in the backyard on Friday nights to all sorts of different things, uh, all, all sorts of different things. He, he built community at every turn, all one-off relationships, meaningful, unique to that person. He's got little crews all over the place. You go to the Chevron, he's got a crew at the Chevron, 5 a.m. coffee, he's helping the lady open up, taking the old papers out, putting the new papers in, getting her set up. Then the guys that uh, work the manual labor jobs are rolling in for coffee. He's there. They're going through whatever the deals of the day are. Then he goes over to the grocery store. Hey, Ernie. You know, he's rolling in there. He knows all the ladies uh, at the pharmacy, uh, at the pharmacist. The Costco, he rolls in there. He's got his crew in there that he knows. Everything was building unity, relationships, and, and community. And that's, that's what I took from him. So at what point did you know you kind of wanted to follow in those footsteps and become a coach? Well, I didn't know until at that last, the last game uh, playing in college. I thought, oh, my gosh, this is getting real. I have to actually do something in life. You know, instead of just it's always spelled out for you. Now you have to actually make a decision for yourself. Uh, heck with this, I'm going to graduate school. That's the easiest thing. We're going to put this off for a little while. And so I went to graduate school and helped as a graduate assistant in the program there at University of San Diego. I thought, you know, I can do this. I, I see concepts and, and things clearly. I, I can help these guys out. I can develop lasting and meaningful relationships. I watched it my whole life. I can get these guys to get to a, a better place than they can take themselves. So we did that. So over the years, as you've watched him and learned <clears throat> from him, are there tidbits you've taken from him that you, that you still use today in coaching? Yeah, it's uh, – just how you deliver a message. You can say anything to somebody, as hard as the, the message might be, and it's all in the delivery. And the more you have built up before you get to the delivery, the better it's going to get received because you give each other the benefit of the doubt. And, and just flipping that to this spring, once we got Carson, everything's been flipped for community relationships. And so we can all give each other the benefit of the doubt when things get a little tight because we all need to rely on each other. The only thing that gets you through the toughest times is the bonds that you have with the people immediately in your circle. So we are strengthening and reinforcing those on a daily basis. And it was the first thing uh, that hit my brain when we got him after being so excited about broke my leg and doing backflips down the hallway. Uh, just how do we get him tied here uh, deeply emotionally for he and his family and so we can get the most out of him for all of us. Are there any examples that stick out to you, whether it be Carson or otherwise, of when you have seen yourself build that relationship and then deliver a message, <clears throat> like like you were saying, that you got from your dad? Oh, gosh. I mean, just years with, with Carson Palmer, getting from a pup and raising him with John Kitna. So you have an older guy yourself and a younger guy. You're all working together to, to bring him along to a point where he can see things fast and clearly, and then all of a sudden uh, in your – shoot, I think it was the – the second year he was starting, we're, we're in a playoff game. And it happened really, really fast. It, just the reinforcement between myself, John Kitna, and, and Carson. And that was one where we, we really got tight fast and really relied on each other. And there are things that John could answer that I couldn't answer because I didn't play the spot. You know, so we really had both sides covered for him. Where uh, And he really wanted to learn. And we, we got a chance to get good fast. And then, then we went no huddle one year with the skill players we had. And, she finished, I think, in the top five in offense really early in his career. That was that was kind of fun. And I guess how uh, – was, was there any messages or that you were able to deliver that relied on 
the sort of relationships you were talking about as well? Like- yeah, the, the message we tried to get across is it, it always comes back to us anyway. So just know you're going to have to answer the question at the end of the day why it didn't happen. So let's know that on Monday and let's work accordingly so we can make sure things, the odds go in our favor more often, that we can have more success more often. Just knowing we've got to answer that question. It, it's always on us anyway. So let's, let's feel that early in a good way. Let's use it as fuel. And that was kind of the message we were trying to get across and continue to with all the groups that I get, just how do we heighten the urgency on a daily basis to get the most out of that day so that we can then start further ahead for the next day and make bigger jumps faster. What's the difference in coaching a guy like Carson who's started for years and years versus Taylor last year is his first time really starting? And, and is it more difficult to kind of teach a veteran maybe some of the stuff you're wanting to impart in him? Well, they're both really similar. Uh, I hit it off with both of them you know, a lot, really easily, and they're they're both guys that just say heck with it a little bit, you know, and I'm, I'm doing this and have a grit to them. And the, the certain guys that have a, a high grit level like that, that have a high pain threshold and, and can play under pressure that way, they're so fun to be around because they don't get affected by outside forces. You can talk about things in the heat of it, and their mind's not on the last series. You're, you can really get to what we're going to do next, and both of those guys are like that. And it was so much fun this past year with Taylor because, let's go. You know, hey, we're here. Let's go. And you knew you were going to get your best from him. You knew you were going to get his whole heart and soul all the time. And that's all you can ask for anyway. You know, whatever number you are, one through ten, you know, if you're an eight, play like an eight all the time. Because then we get all the, the camaraderie and the and the heart and the guts. But don't be a nine and play like a seven. Then you're always disappointed, you know. And with Carson's mechanics, what what do you see out of those and – you know, mechanics for a guy again who's who's been playing in the NFL for years now. Is it is it hard to maybe change them in a way if you want to change them at all? Well, there's always certain things you want to move in the direction of more often to gain consistency, and, and we try to do that on a daily basis. And he really likes to work like a lot, and, and he puts his mind on it, and he really likes to talk about the details of things. Uh, so those conversations are easily had. Getting getting things fixed for anybody, it's not an overnight thing. It's a process thing. And as long as both both people are committed to going in that same direction and see things the same way, you can make strides as you go, and that's what we're doing. All right. Carson was in another offense for so long, and he's talked about kind of adapting to that. What what can that do to him, uh, that change of perspective, and how can that help him, do you think? Yeah, I think playing in any offense for a period of time helps you because there's concepts that carry over. And the key is, okay, we know what this concept looks like. We know where all the bodies are buried out here. When we put them out there, how do we read it? And th- those are where the subtle differences come in. And thank goodness he's got an urgency about him that wants to know why we do it th- this way so that we can then play that way because you're ingrained one way. Been in the same system for a while. You see things easily one way. It's hard to flip it. But uh, for the guys that want to and want to really dig into where they're at and be a part of where they're at, and he has, you know, we're going to see some of these concepts a little differently in, in order because sometimes you have a-, a different style of player that you want to emphasize that part of the read versus another even though it's the same play. And that's where we're at with the different pieces that we have, trying to emphasize where the ball is going to go and why. And it seems like maybe he turned a corner after that stadium practice in terms of just kind of getting into a a rhythm. What have you kind of seen from him as the season's gotten closer, him just being more comfortable in in this offense? Yeah, each day is just a little bit more. It's just a little bit more. It doesn't mean that you're going to win. It just means you're going to put yourself in position more often to do it right. And then that will lead to winning the consistency over time and making good decisions to being on time, knowing who that person is and where he comes out of the break. All those things increase your odds just a little bit. And that's all we're trying to do each day is put the odds in our favor a little bit more through technique, through understanding of players, through understanding of zones, where the ball's going and why. And then after a while, we're not thinking about things as much. We're just reacting. And that's it's a process, and we're going right through it. Anybody else? Is, when you look at Carson with mechanics, got the special arm talent. There's some time he can make a throw without his feet getting around and make an on-target throw. And then the next time, he might not do that. So how do you balance that with a guy with the arm talent like that who sometimes doesn't need that, but other times does? Yeah. Um, does yeah. Any throws that you throw without your feet firmly planted as if you have money on throwing the ball to that target, usually the odds go down. Now, sometimes they make you do it, and sometimes you do it just because, you know, I just fell off of that one. Well, the discipline to stay and not fall off is what we're trying to get. We've got to hit all the open threes that we can because we're going to have to put the ball on the floor often enough 
you know, and that makes it a little tougher. But when, when it's open three, seven hitch throw, we got to hit them all, and it's got to look at the same all the time. So we're just trying to get the repetition and the consistency of, of the same thing over and over again to never miss. What's it like having Scott Turner on the sideline now? And how do you, like, guys work together, you, him, and Carson? Oh, that's easy because we do it on the practice field. It's just an extension of any other day that we're out here. And it's good because you can, you're right there to ask, oh, what do you think about this? And yeah. what about that? You know, it's different when you're up, you know, you still have lines of communication, but standing next to somebody, the communication is a little quicker and easier. How do you continue to develop a young guy like Sam Howell in the season when you're close Yeah, great question. You know, when somebody gives you such a, a talented player, uh, you got to find ways to buy time throughout the week. And, and we do that through, uh, you know, I, I make sure I ask him questions in meetings. And we spend time Friday after practice. We spend a little time throwing. And then Wednesday and Thursday, he has specific things that we talked about doing that he does on his own with a spot throw Wednesday, Thursday. Then we do it together Friday, the red zone stuff. And uh, it's been fun. Have it's been fun. Very much. More, more his style than anything else. His personality, his character, and his urgency every day. And his, well, he really likes football. With your personality character, what do you mean? Like, what are the things that he shows you? Well, you never you never wonder where his mind's at. It's always where it's supposed to be. It's always in the room with you when you're going over stuff, or when it's time to you know let your hair back a little bit. We're outside and we're joking around when the time's right. But he never mixes. You know what I mean? He knows when to do what, and that's a that's a maturity thing. He's wise beyond his years that way. He can read the room easily, and uh, you you never wonder if he's uh, locked and loaded. All right. Thanks, coach. All right. Thank you. Appreciate. It. Oh, you know I did too. That was quite an offense. I thought, yeah, he was good.